All right, folks. Today's r slash relationship saga features an ex who vanishes after a four-year relationship. Ever been ghosted? This takes it to a whole new level. All righty, let's dive in. My ex decided to end things by ghosting me, and I was starting to heal until I found out the reasons why he ghosted. Posted by Throw Me Away 4781. The past several months have been incredibly draining and hard for me. I'm not sure if I'm looking for advice or just a place to vent. My ex Tom and I had been together for about four years, and we were extremely happy together, or so I thought. We had been discussing the possibility of getting married and were even looking for a house for us to move into, but we were not living together. I was happy, and I thought he was too. We had a lot in common, never fought, traveled together, my friends liked him, his friends liked me, our families got along, etc. I could go on. Everything was fine until our last trip together. We went to a destination where I had always wanted to go, but because of cost and distance, it seemed like something I'd have to wait longer to do. It was his idea for us to go there. We saved a lot of money and were able to make this two-week trip. Once we got back from this vacation, things started to get weird. After we landed, the last time I saw him, he told me he was feeling unwell and sick from the trip and wanted to go home to sleep. I didn't think this was too unusual, so we said our goodbyes. I tried texting and calling him the following day to see if he was feeling better, and he didn't respond. I started to worry, but he finally sent me a single text saying he was fine but tired about two and a half days after our trip ended. From there, our communication basically broke down. I can't say he fully ghosted me because he would occasionally send me a message and didn't remove me from any social media. From that point, I'd try to contact him by calling, texting, or sending a message on Facebook, and he didn't respond. After about four to six days of no communication, he would send me a couple of texts, and then I wouldn't hear from him for several more days. What hurt even more was that this ghosting period overlapped with New Year's Valentine's Day and my birthday, days on which he didn't even wish me a happy whatever. I felt like I was going crazy. I had no idea what was going on and just wanted some sort of answer from him. I was also extremely embarrassed to talk to anyone about what was happening. I stopped going out as much and didn't see my friends for the two plus months he was trickle ghosting me. I found myself lying to my friends and family about his whereabouts, telling them he was busy with work, visiting his family, he was sick, or any excuse I could think of whenever I showed up somewhere without him. I eventually broke down. I contacted one of his good friends with whom I felt comfortable and asked her to meet up with me. I told her that Tom had barely spoken to me in the two plus months. He'd only sent me a few text messages and I had no idea what was going on. I told her I didn't know if he was mad at me, if we were broken up or still together, or if there was something else going on that I needed to know about. She looked kind of shocked and confused and told me that Tom had told all of his friends that we had broken up, that I was taking it really hard and out of respect for me, not to bring it up if anyone saw me. This was soul-crushing to hear and I felt humiliated and worthless. I told her this wasn't the case and that he never verbally confirmed that we were broken up. She said she was extremely angry at him and would talk to him. Throughout March and April, I felt like I was starting to heal somewhat. I felt broken, but I started to pick up the pieces again and began to feel a bit more whole. I told my friends and family the truth about what happened, and they were nothing but supportive and helpful. Then I found out some additional information about why he ghosted me and what happened on his end. He had apparently been cheating on me for a while, not sure how long, but a little less than a year. I'm also hurt because I know the person he cheated on me with. She's an absolute garbage person, and I'm not saying that as a jaded ex-girlfriend. She has always hung around our group, but never really been a part of it. I've heard her say some extremely bigoted things about minorities, the LGBT community, and non-Christians. She's the type of person who is proud to take advantage of government assistance programs when she doesn't need it. She somehow was able to claim disability and has bragged about pulling the wool over the government's eyes. I think she was able to use her obesity problem as her disability, but I'm not really sure. I can't confirm any of this. It could be a lot of talk and exaggeration on her part. I've always thought you needed to be drug tested to receive some government benefits. And she does a lot of drugs. Not only does she take advantage of programs meant for people who can't help themselves, but she also receives a couple of thousand dollars a month from her rich parents, which she brags about. Her parents have paid for her car, and I think they pay her rent too. So the money she gets is spent on pretty much whatever she wants. 
She spends her days getting drunk at the bars and restaurants my friends and I frequent and interjects herself into our outings. She has also tried to sell us hard drugs in the past and usually mentions that any of us are welcome at her place to get high. Tom apparently started getting high with her at her place and was initially just trying to hide his drug use because he knew I wouldn't approve. Then he started to get high and have sex with her. He felt guilty and embarrassed about it, but this wasn't enough for him to stop getting high with her. His intentions were to just get high and then leave to go back to his place, but they would usually end up having sex once they were both properly high. This woman hated me and kept pushing Tom to break up with me so they could be a couple. He didn't want to end things with me, but he felt so guilty and disgusted with himself that he thought the best thing to do was to ghost me. Tom kept their relationship a secret for a while until she got tired of their secret relationship status. So she just started blurting things out about them when his friends were all together at their usual bar. He came clean to his friends about it, but was so embarrassed that he shortly ended things with her after his secret was found out. I only found out about this because the same friend I had met up with a couple of months ago reached out to warn me that Tom is going to try to get back together with me and felt that I deserve to know the truth in case he isn't honest about what happened. There is no way in hell I'd get back together with Tom. I can't help but feel like absolute dog sh**, wondering why Tom would end things with me over that kind of garbage person. I'm having a hard time understanding why he would choose such a waste of space over someone who is trying to be a genuine person and is successful. I don't know what to do at this point. I'm dreading the possibility of seeing his face again. I don't know if I could contain my urge to slap him or if I would just break down and sob. I was doing well from moving on from him. I was starting to feel happy again. Now I think I'm back at square one. I'm depressed and stressed out. Is there anything I can do? I kind of want to stay hidden in my apartment, not answering calls until this is all over. Oh man, here we were thinking the worst thing that can happen after a trip is just losing your luggage. But nope, Tom had to one-up it with a masterclass in how not to adult. Seriously, ghosting after four years? That's like binge-watching a TV series and skipping the last episode. And then there's Miss Government's Most Wanted. Talk about a plot twist. To our storyteller, Sweetie, you dodged a bullet, or rather a whole missile. If Tom can't communicate after a vacation, imagine him dealing with real life. My advice, don't succumb to the pressure and avoid him at all costs. He's a little boy. You're a grown woman. Now, on to the comments. I know it can feel tempting to stay hidden and not answer calls, but I think reaching out for support will actually help more. If you don't feel comfortable with friends, maybe family, or getting a therapist, it might help you to get some of these feelings out, process through it, and just know people are there for you. You deserve a million times better than this, and I'm sure the people you have in your life will help convince you of this and you should let them. Be kind to yourself and treat yourself how you would a good friend. Do things that make you happy, do things that cheer you up, and things that feel good for you. Maybe meditation or yoga would help if you are into that. Eating healthy and taking care of yourself. It is hard to be specific because all this looks different for everyone, but if you look up self-care and try some things, I think it will help. Maybe create a plan for if you see him. Feeling prepared takes out some unknowns and makes us feel more capable of handling things. Have a script you can use, ways to get out, etc. Then you won't fear it as much and you'll go in with confidence because you know what to do. What he did was awful and not at all your fault. He is not good enough for you. It's also okay you didn't know. Don't feel bad about you. He kept all this hidden and love can make people overlook little red flags, but sometimes there also are not any. You are not stupid or foolish or anything. You did everything right because you had no reason to look for trouble. First off, you are absolutely going to be okay. The silver lining in all of this is that no one who looks at this situation won't see it for exactly what it is. Tom is a self-sabotaging idiot who threw away a good thing to be gross. You're embarrassed right now because you see his actions as a reflection of you. And of course, that's understandable. He was your partner for a while and you were together when he began this behavior. But very, very few other people will see it that way. You guys are separate entities, and you never embarrassed yourself by getting high and effing around. The longer you isolate yourself, the harder it will be to stop. No one blames you for not wanting to go out, but it's time to fake it till you make it. Call some girlfriends, tell them what happened, and that you need a sexy girls' night out. Go out, and even if you're miserable, take some cute pictures, blast them on social media, and show everyone how dope as hell you are. 
It can be a small group. It doesn't have to be all night long, but your morning phase needs to be over. Give yourself permission to feel good again and give yourself the satisfaction of knowing when he hears about you next, it'll be about how good you're doing. It never hurts to talk to someone about this stuff too. Therapy is amazing and everyone should experience it at some point in their life. Maybe check it out just to see how it makes you feel. That dude was a dog and you are lucky to be rid of him. Time to throw yourself a party, baby. Hey, wait, as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And let me know what you would have done if you were in this situation down in the comments below. Anyways, stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love, peace.